when the water started to subside, uh, we were cleaning up, of course. Uh, but before that, I walked. I said to my father, "I'll walk around and see if I can see the back of our shed because I knew the car was in it and the water was much higher." The reports were telling us about what had happened, and we knew the water would be. Well, the water had come into the yard uh, about three feet, but our house was six feet high at the back, and uh, so it didn't. Never, it never got into the house. Only about halfway up the back stairs. So I walked around to where Baldwin's Hollow comes up in, to become Steam Street. And um, I could see the back of our big shed, which was about 60 feet across the back of the house, had been stables many years before. And I could see that the water was, you know, so high. And uh, so I went back, to, uh, while I was, I, I think it was at that same time that I was on that, uh, uh, view, viewing this from, yeah. from yeah. the top of the Steam Street, that I could see the, the um, signal box moving. moving. And I could see the trouble they were having to get to try to rescue those people. And eventually um, they did rescue the two men. And then I saw that the one man had his had the other fellow by the waist. I think it was uh, Vince uh, Hughes and uh, Bob, Bob Smith. Smith. And um, I didn't know who they were, of course. And I knew that some said that Joe O'Brien was in there as well, eventually. And he was drowned, of course. But I saw the, the helicopter pick these two men up, the one holding around the other's waist. And he tried to land them at uh, Maitland Station, but couldn't because of the crowd there and the people, the cars. Then he thought that he would, obviously he would have thought that he would take them over to Regent Street, overhead bridge. But um, uh, when he swung the people on the end of the rope, uh, the two men let go and of course fell across the power lines. And uh, it had a profound effect on me at that time. I walked back along Church Street to, uh, to go down to the shop again uh, a friend, a lady that I knew spoke to me, but I couldn't answer her. And when I got down as far as uh, Sol Pattinson's, I think it was at the time, oh, Pattinson, the, the, the Sol, uh, anyway, the chemist shop, uh, that uh, lass was standing at the doorway whom I knew, and um, I had trouble talking to her, and she took me in and uh, gave me a glass of water to calm me down. But I was all right after that, but it was a, 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 an imprint on my mind that I could never forget. Uh, we then later heard uh, about the news that Auntie had drowned or had disappeared in the waters. Um, I'm going back a bit there, but um, uh, the, the destruction to that, to the overhead bridge was the next uh, worry for us by the the time the Monday came and the waters had subsided and we were trying to clean the shop out and, and the back of the shop, the, the garbage that was brought in by the river, uh, we, uh, uh, there were several times that there were snakes there, but of course, once we started to move stuff, they, they disappeared. I don't know what happened to them, I suppose. But they, uh, uh, the people out the front were, were uh, continually coming along and scooping up the, the stuff that we'd taken out and uh, taking it away. He did give an estimate of what we were supposed to remove, but I've always thought it was a bit much. <laughs> a little bit of exaggeration doesn't hurt. But anyway, um, we uh, about four o'clock on the Monday afternoon, uh, we were still cleaning, and I said to my father, what day is it? And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, it's my birthday. <laughs> so that was the 28th of February. So that was the Monday afternoon uh, of that uh, experience. And naturally, we did get back home. The Long Bridge, by this time, when we did get back home, had collapsed. And uh, it was very difficult to get back, but back home we got.